Okay, uh, this is CSC 161, uh, Advanced Java Programming. Tonight's topics that we'll be covering is abstraction and interfaces. Uh, we're going to write code. This code is not in the book, so you'll want to follow along with me, or if you're coming back seeing this as a recording, uh, do cue this in with me. Okay, so our setup on this. We're going to have a parent class, a master class, uh, and a subclass that we're going to work with this. Uh, we're going to use vehicle as our master class. Okay, now uh, sometimes when you're creating a higher level class, you realize, you know, everybody that inherits from me needs to have this particular function, but everybody is going to do it so differently, there is not a default function that I can create that won't cause somebody problems. So instead, I'm going to not give a default function for this, but I am going to require everybody that inherits from me to create their own function by that name. So can't give you a default, but I can require you to go out there and create one. So that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to start this off. I'm in here. Oh, have I created my class yet? No. Okay. So create a class. And I'm going to call this particular class vehicle. Okay, and no, I'm not going to need a public static void main because these are all just pure classes that I'm creating. They are designed to do some work, but they have to be called from elsewhere for the work to happen. So no main in this stuff. Click on finish. Okay. Hopefully this is coming up here pretty quick. Yeah, there we go. And I'm going to uh, arrange the curly braces to my preference. Okay, now we're not going to have to import anything, but one thing I am going to have to do is add a keyword up here on line two. Since I'm going to require everybody that inherits from me to have a particular function, but I'm not going to give a default, then this is called an abstract class. So abstract is the keyword. And here's the reason for it being called that. Uh, abstract means it doesn't exist in the real world. You will never ever instantiate vehicle unless somebody has inherited from vehicle and because I'm going to create a car in a minute that that inherits from vehicle, the car will call for the vehicle to be instantiated. But you cannot just go instantiate vehicle if you declare it to be abstract. Okay, so that's one of the things. Now then let's get a couple of variables in here that we can mess with. And again, this is just a generic vehicle is what we're working with. So I'm going to put private int, and this is number of wheels. And I'll set that equal to zero, uh, which means when anybody instantiate vehicles, that is some, you better give them some wheels, okay? Because right now it doesn't have any. Okay, then uh, next enough will be private int, and this will be max load. So for this vehicle, what's the maximum load you can put on it? And I'll set that up equal to zero as well. Okay, now then, uh, let's do one more. And uh, will vehicles have fuel? Maybe gasoline, maybe diesel, maybe electric, whatever it is, but they have fuel. So I'm going to put this in here private. And this will be a double. Call it fuel. And that's going to be equal to zero as well. And we do stuff like this without thinking about it. Uh, what this requires the uh, computer to do is take this integer value, convert it over into a double value, and then drop it into that particular field. Okay. Now, here comes the class that I want everybody to have, but I'm not going to give a, a default for. You know, I'm not going to say, well, if you don't say anything else, this happens. No, no, no. Okay, so. 
this will be public and it uses the keyword abstract as well so public abstract it returns nothing and it has to be given nothing so it's going to be void the name of it is uh, going to be simply start engine okay so let me get my cursor back down here so s-t-a-r-t-e-n-g-i-n-e -E. okay and i'm handing it nothing so those are empty now that is syntactically correct it cannot be instantiated on its own uh you, you you just can't and that's what this does so anybody that inherits from vehicle will be forced to create a start engine or it will be a syntax error and you can't even compile all right so let's uh get a couple of things going on in here so underneath this this will be public and it'll return nothing it's going to be make noise all vehicles make some kind of noise Oh, no, not there. On this one, we actually have to have stuff to go in there. Okay, so make noise, real simple. Uh, let's see, sys out control space. Is it going to do it? <laughs> okay, uh, and what I want to print on this is just some kind of noise. Okay, so uh, quote, beep, beep. And right now, I am coding just to have some functions that we can call and make use of. In real life, uh, you would honk the horn and we would write the code that would go uh, pull in the signal from the electronics where the horn is, runs into the little uh, uh, car's computer, and it sends a message down to whatever's in control of the horn and tells it to make noise and it goes beep beep. So uh, there's a few steps missing there, that's okay. Okay, now on the rest of these, let's see. I believe I just want getters and setters for this. So I can go to, I believe it's source, and generate getters and setters. And yes, I want it for all of them. And tell it okay. Okay, and all of a sudden we now have getters and setters. Of course, unfortunately, they are not used in the manner that, you know, that I prefer. Uh, curly braces are up here. Uh, depends on what kind of mood I'm in. When I leave them like that, I can pretty much tell they were just getters and setters that were generated. But I believe I'll go down through this just so that when I look at code, especially my code, I expect a certain pattern in the code. And any place my mind can pick up that pattern doesn't occur is a red flag to me. And it may not be wrong, but it's not looking right. And so uh, that's one reason I'm so careful with all this. I do use just pure patterns of what it looks like to help me find uh, syntax errors and such. Okay, so there it is. That's our vehicle. It is abstract. Start engine is an abstract method. And if you have as much as one abstract method within it, uh, within this object, then the object has to be declared abstract as well. Okay, so that's how you make an abstract class. Now then let's go find something that inherits from this and see what it does. So let's go create a car object. So I'll need a new, and this is separate code in a separate file but still within the same project. Okay, so I'm gonna click on uh, this. Uh, what I want is to call it car. And again, this, I'm just describing an object. I'll wait until I, I get ready to do stuff with it to have a main. So I'm not going to click that, just let it come out. Very simply like that, straighten it up. Okay, and uh, in this case, if I want to inherit from, that will be car extends vehicle. Okay, and uh, as soon as I do that, uh, notice it gave me an error. Okay, so let me click down here. The error is still there. What is it telling me? 
It's saying if you're going to inherit from vehicle, you must create a start engine method. And that is what using the um, keywords abstract did for me in vehicle. So I'm going to come over then and say, okay, public. Oh, spell it right. That helps. Okay. Uh, I think I hit an insert key by accident. There we go. Public. Gosh. Okay. Uh, let's see. Void start engine. have to give it nothing okay and at this point the uh, syntax checker is happy I have created a method that takes nothing returns nothing called start engine we're good okay in this case though I'll go ahead and give it something to do uh, sys out control space and I'll say uh, quote insert key and I'm going to get these to list right underneath each other. So I'll say backslash in so it drops down the line and returns. And then I'll say uh, here engine noise. And then I'll drop down another line and say uh, release key. Yeah. Okay. And that's all I have to do now in real life for starting an engine in a car. Well, yeah, uh, you turn the key, then that sends a contact over to the little car's computer, which sends message down to the electric starter for the starter to start turning over. It also goes into the carburetor and just everything there for a cold start. All of that is happening behind the scenes, but that's not what we're studying. We're trying to look at abstract classes. Okay, and so far, no errors. Now, in vehicle, along with start engine, I had make noise, and then I had the getters and setters for all uh, three of these variables. So that gives me a total of uh, eight methods. And if I look at car.java, I only see the one. Well, the other seven are coming in from the inheritance. Okay, now I want to test this and see if it's working okay. So now is the time I want to create another class that has a, uh, uh, I've got a, I'm sorry, I've got a gnat going here. I uh, created another class that does have a main in it and will make it do things. So this one, uh, new Java class, and I will call this one test vehicle and children okay and yes i want a public static void name in this one okay uh clean it up like i enjoy seeing it did i lose that what are y'all seeing right now are y'all still seeing uh -huh. the code yeah, I still see the code. Okay, good. Well, I hit a button and I was afraid that I you know, lost it and y'all were just looking at my happy face. Okay. All right. Uh, so on the code, enter and enter. All right. Now then, in main, I want to create a car to see if everything on it works right. Well, since I have created a class called car, I can say, hey, give me a, a place to hold the car, and I'll just call that one C, and that's going to be equal to, uh, okay, go to the machine that I built that builds cars and say, uh, give me a new car. Okay. Well, hopefully that works. Uh, to find out for sure, though, we have to test it. So I'm going to say C dot, all right, now here's when you can tell if everything is going right. As soon as you put the dot after that object name, then it lists everything you can do with that object. And there's a lot of stuff here we don't even know about because that just comes from for free because it's an object. 
all right, so one of the things I, I need to check all this stuff. I need to check get fuel, uh, get a max load, get number of wheels. So I'll just go ahead and do that one. Get load, okay. That's nice, but just because I get it doesn't mean I've done anything with it. What I would like to do is actually print this out. Okay, so let's get set up a little bit better here. I'm gonna come into this one. I'm going to do a sys out. And on this, I'm going to say, uh, begin testing car object. Okay. And you could do more than that if you wanted to, but I need to uh, print this out. So I'm gonna do a sys out here. And now then I've got to get that inside the parentheses. Okay, get max load. All right. Uh, that's enough for me to just see if this will work. And it is my habit to only do so much code before I turn around and run it to see if it works up to that point. That limits the places I have to go look to find errors. So I'll try to run this thing now. And if it works right, it'll say begin testing car object and underneath that just simply print a zero because that's the max load. Okay, so uh, click on run. And it should say you got to redo all three of these. None of them have been converted yet, so okay. And at the bottom, I get begin testing car object and get a zero. So, so far, so good. That also means car inherited from vehicle because vehicle's the one that has get max load. So I'm going to take these three, excuse me, that one right there and make three out of it. So uh, control C for copy, control V three times to get three copies of it. So one was get max load. One was, I believe, get fuel. And the other was uh, get number of wheels. And since they're automatically generated, I already know what they called them. I say, and then watch that. No, syntactically it's correct. Okay, if I run this again, then I should get this same begin testing car object, but get three zeros. So let's try that. Okay, and the fuel, of course, is a double, so it's 0, 0.0. All right, so far, so wonderful. Now, that tells me my getters work. That tells me my constructor works, but I don't know about my setters yet. Okay, so I'm going to do setters to start with, and this will be c.set, and I'll do it in the same order. I don't know why I did it in this order, but I did. Okay, I'm gonna set max load, and I'll set the max load to 500, okay? Uh, then I'll do C dot, and I want to set fuel next. And so I'll set fuel to uh, 25.0. That's a fairly good size gas tank today. Uh, let's see, then uh, C dot, and uh, only thing left is set number of wheels. And I'll uh, set that to four. Come on, here we go. Okay, then to see if that worked, I need to turn around and do get max load, get fuel, get number of wheels again. So I'm just gonna come over here and copy. and drop down to line 15 and paste it. All right, so, yep, that looks like everything's in order. So I'm gonna come back up here and run it again. So I have tested my getters. I have tested my setters. Okay, that gives me six things that I have tested. There's still two more to go. Okay, and one of them is called make noise. Uh, oh, excuse me, start engine, and the other one is called make noise, if I remember right, yep. Okay, so <clears throat> to test this then, I'm going to come back in and tell the car to start the engine, tell the car to make noise. And uh, we'll see 
if that works okay. So this will be another, uh, uh, come on, you should be, okay. Well, wherever you wanna be, that's fine. Okay, uh, another sys out. And what I want it to sys out is C dot, and I need start engine. So I'll just start to spell it and it will get to me eventually. Okay, and a uh, little bit of extra help in there. Okay, that still doesn't, why doesn't it like that? Does anybody see what I'm missing here? Print Lin in the type. Uh, isn't... Start engine is a void, right? Start engine is a void. And it contains its own print statements, right? Yeah. Okay. So, and that's what this error message is telling me. It's saying, hey, you're telling me to print nothing. I don't know how to print nothing. I print stuff. So I'll come over here and uh, backspace and just simply call start engine and it will print messages for me on its own. So let's see, I've got one extra close paren. Okay, so I've got a start engine and the other was make noise and it's gonna be the same thing. So I'll do C dot make uh, noise and I can just do that and we're good. Okay, so now then, I lost the rest of my screen. Anybody see where the rest of my screen went? Uh, window. Uh, editor, no. So, if you I'm listening. Double, I was gonna say, if you double tap like the top bar next to where it says like test vehicle, it usually okay. brings it back. Okay, thank you. It's not a mistake I make often, so I'm not, okay. Uh, all right, so this is ready to go. I'll just go ahead and clear that out just so it's not confusing. Okay, and I'll go ahead and run this now and see if all of this does as it's supposed to. Okay, let me raise this up a little. There we go. So I'm testing the car object. The getters worked. Then I did setters and getters again, so the setters worked. And here is my start engine, and here is my make noise. That is functioning as expected. So that one's okay. Y'all okay here? Okay, then let's add a truck. Okay, I've got a car object. Okay, I wanna add a truck object. So a new Java class. We're gonna come in here and get truck and nothing good to go with it. And clear that. Okay, same thing. A truck is going to extend, extends vehicle. And again, I get the error message immediately. If you're going to extend it, then you must do the, uh, what is it, start engine. Okay, so I'm gonna come out here and I'm going to make a spelling mistake on purpose on this because I wanna show you something, okay? So I'm going to do public void start and I'm going to leave out the A on purpose just so I have misspelled this, start engine. And that is something I do all the time is misspell typos, okay? And underneath this, and if you'll notice, this thing's still not happy because as far as it's concerned, I have not created a start engine function. Well, when all we're doing is just this, it's pretty easy to see that mistake. But if you have 10 or 15 methods that you're doing and you have inherited from uh, a one place, you've got an interface from another place, it's not quite so easy to tell what you've done wrong. So one thing we can do to help us with this is that we can include a keyword here that starts with an at sign. So at O-V-E-R-R-I-D-E. -E. And what that says is that the next line I type should be an override of an already existing method. And so when I type this in, 
it looks and says, no, you know, there's no method that already exists with that name. So no, that's a mistake. And this at override guarantees that you have at least spelt the name of one of the methods that you're supposed to override. And so I'll almost always, I include that uh, just for, oops, just for that benefit. Okay. So whenever you see at override in somebody's code, that means that this is a method from whatever's been inherited that they're override. Okay. So on this one, start engine. Uh, let's just put something fun in here. So uh, sys out. Okay. And on this one, we'll do uh, double quote insert key. Uh, then after we've inserted the key, let's turn key. Now, from right here, I'm giving my age away because there are a lot of vehicles now that all you have to do is have the fob with you. You sit down in the car and you push the start button. So that would be a completely different method, but I'm doing the, you got to put the key in and turn it. So anyway, uh, so we've turned the key. Now then we want to uh, hear engine noise. In this case, it'll probably be a lot louder. Uh, backslash in and uh, release key. A few too many yeses in there. And go to the end of the line, make sure that finished out fine and it did. Okay, so there's my start engine. Whoop. Let's go up a line and see if I can get, yeah, we're back. Okay, where I can see the beginning. Okay, so there's my start engine. Now, the last thing you want to do, uh, have, have I introduced y'all to Clifford? Have y'all heard of Clifford? Um, like the, the cartoon? Uh, the big red dog? You're close. Okay, you're close. No. Uh, my wife decided she wanted a vehicle. She wanted, well, there's a reason for it. We had a big trailer that we needed to haul. So uh, her turn to get a car, she looks it up, she does everything. She goes out and buys it, uses her credit and her name, everything. And she comes home with a Dodge Ram extended cab, extended bed, duly, bright red. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> and uh, man, this this is one heck of a truck. We still got it, and uh, so we are we drove up, and our son in his thirties at the time saw it, looked at it, and said, "Okay, its name is Clifford. It's the big red truck." Okay, so anyway, that's Clifford. Well, when you're driving around in Clifford and you beep the horn, the last thing you want to hear is beep beep. You want it to make some noise, okay? I don't quite want a train whistle on it, but you know, make some noise. So this little beep beep thing for make noise just didn't go to cut it. So I'm gonna come down here and even though I'm not required to, I just, that function I don't particularly like. So I'm going to override and I'm going to say public void and it's make noise, open, close. Okay, and with the override there, I'm comfortable. I spelled it right and everything. And so I'm gonna sys out. And what I'm going to do is say, honk. Okay, that's the kind of noise you want Clifford to make. Okay, uh, so I have now overridden make noise. I'm still inheriting everything. And here's the funny thing, when it makes vehicle, it makes a vehicle that still has beep beep in it. But when it makes truck, it makes truck that has the same function and it goes honk real loud. Well, the reason this will work is if I tell the car, if I tell the truck to make noise, that looks to see if the truck itself knows how to do it. If it does, then it uses that one. 
if the truck doesn't know how to make noise, like the car, I didn't tell the car how to make noise, then it looks up the line and uses what's up the line. Okay, so that's the order this stuff kind of goes in. Okay, so now I've got a truck. Let's go back to test vehicle. Matt, I'm going to rearrange my tabs up here uh, just because it makes sense. There we go. So I've got vehicle, car, truck, and now I'm testing stuff. And to test the truck, I want to do essentially everything I did with the car. Well, everything I did with the car. And I can use those same values and everything. So I'm just going to uh, copy all of this. Control C for copy. Control V once just puts it right back where it was. Control V again gives me a second copy of it. Now this will generate some errors because I already have a variable called C, okay? And uh, so I'm gonna take this and say, no, don't want a truck. I mean, don't want a car, I want a truck. Okay, and I'll call the name of the truck TR. And that's gonna be a new truck. Okay, now, I've got to come in here and change all of my C's to TR's, but still that's easier than having to key everything from scratch again. And then I will be testing car and then testing truck. Oh, let's not insult Clifford. Clifford is a one ton dually. Our other car is a very little car. And I was up at school one day. My wife had been running around the little car. And I answered the phone, said yes. And I heard her say, bring Clifford. <laughs> so I said, okay. So I left Tom came and picked her up. And, and Clifford turns out while she was out driving, somebody, because she was in a little car, had cut her off. And it just hacked her off. And so we spent the next half hour cruising the streets trying to find him so that I could cut him off with Clifford. But it didn't work, but anyway. Okay, and got to do TRs again. Uh -uh. And TR here. And TR make noise. Okay, now this will begin testing of the truck object and to make my printout a little easier to read, I'm gonna drop down a couple of lines. So there'll be two blank lines between the last line that printed and this line. Okay, so uh, get this back up where I can see it. Okay, and I'm gonna key in run. And I've got to redo truck and got to redo the test. And first thing up was the car, which went by fine. Why did I put 1,000 pounds in a one ton truck? That should be 2,000. Uh, 25, four, and it honks. All right. This is making use of an abstract class. Could you go back to the truck class? Yes. Let me get this down and go back over to here. Yeah, I'm having an error with the make noise. It's saying that um, to remove the override. Is that an, an ampersand in front of the capital O? Yeah. Is that a capital O and not a zero? Yes. Okay, then go to the beginning of this line and do slash slash, turn it into a comment. And now, does it get rid of the error? Oh, uh, yeah. Okay, I can't tell you why. Do you have two R's in override? Yeah, I, th I think I fixed it. What was it? I don't know, it was just the error under the make noise. Okay. It's telling me to remove it. Yeah, and that's what can happen when an error occurs. You, the compiler may not be able to pick it up till a few lines down. So you always want to look at the error and then up a little. Um,
All right, let me stop the, oh, we're, we're doing okay. All right. <clears throat> Questions, because this is my presentation on abstract. Okay, that's first topic of the night. Second topic of the night is interface. And after we've done abstract, you can, follow along with an interface a little bit better. Uh, let's just key it in, okay. Uh, I want to create, which one there's on my test. I'm looking at my notes, y'all. Can't see it, but that's what's going on. Okay. We're gonna change things up a little bit, but let's go create an interface. So I'm going, I'm staying in the same project because I'm gonna make use of all these objects in here. Okay, uh, I want to create a new Java class and I'm going to call this one Energy Sync. All one word. And anybody that works in electronics has a clue what that is. It just means it's a place that pulls energy out of the system. Okay. Uh, okay, uh, and I do not need anything other than that. So I'll click on finish. Okay, straighten this up a little bit. Now then, on this one, for it to be an interface, it's not even considered a class. And if you go back and, and follow in Eclipse and look it up, there's options you can set before it gets here and it will have already made this change for you. But that's okay, I don't mind. Because I really want to point this out, that if you're working with an interface, it is not a class. It is an interface. Okay, here's the rule. Every method in the interface must be abstract. You cannot fill in any of the methods. Okay, so I'm only gonna put one in here and then we'll talk about this a little bit more. Excuse me. Okay, uh, this is going to be public double. So it's going to return something. It's going to be called consumption. Okay, and that's the name of the method. And for this, you have to have the bitcha bakata, you have to hand it a double value of some kind. And I just for the variable name, I'll call it CT. That'll make sense in a little bit. Okay. 